Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. And we start with the budget. The $2.9 billion proposed budget presented to city council members includes several spending cuts to deal with pandemic-related revenue shortfalls. But despite activist calls to defund the police, little has changed in the SAPD budget. In fact, it would actually go up with this plan. City Hall reporter Garrett Berger tells us why and if this is a done deal. Well, there are some changes to the SAPD budget this year, including cuts to overtime. However, because officers are scheduled to get a 5% pay raise, their overall budget is actually going to go up $8 million. Now, while city manager Eric Walsh has not ruled out permanent changes to the police department and how it's funded, he's proposing a longer, deliberate process of looking into its functions and exploring possible alternatives. And he doesn't expect that process to be over until April. So funding chases would have to wait until later budgets. But numerous residents who called into the meeting to speak were not satisfied with that approach. I strenuously agree with all the previous speakers that this bloated police budget is unacceptable. You say that you've heard our calls to defund the police, and yet instead you've done the opposite and expanded their budget another year. The proposed budget does include a, a uh, move of 20 crisis response team members from under SAPD over to Metro Health as part of a larger move to put all violence prevention programs under the health agency's umbrella. Now, the city council members and members of the public will have chances to speak over the next couple of weeks in preparation for the council's eventual vote sometime in September. However, it sounds like most of those opportunities will be virtual. We'll have details on how you can speak later on our website, ksat.com. Live downtown, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, a murder suspect now behind bars after police started looking for him late last month. 32-year-old James Walker accused of stabbing and killing a man. Now, Walker was charged with murder, according to police, back on July 31st. 49-year-old David Overstreet was found stabbed to death inside a motel in the 5700 block of Industry Park Drive. Police say Overstreet got into an argument with a woman. At some point, Walker confronted Overstreet in a room, and the two men got into a fight. Police say Walker pulled out a knife and stabbed Overstreet. A man hit and killed by a driver on the northeast side Monday night now has been identified. The medical examiner's office now saying he is Paul Ralph Pardo. Police say the passerby found Pardo just before midnight on Monday near the intersection of Nacogdoches Road and Salado Cliff Drive. That's not too far from Lady Bird Johnson Park. Police tell us that Pardo had severe head trauma and was pronounced dead at the scene. At last check, investigators were still looking for the driver who hit him. One man is in the hospital after an attempted robbery ends in a shooting on the city's south side. Police say several rounds were fired around 5 this morning at Rosemont at University Park Apartment Complex located in the 100 block of Emerald Ash. Alicia Barrera spoke to police on the scene and has the latest in that investigation. Police say a vehicle with several suspects inside approached that victim while he was outside early this morning. The victim tried to run away, leading to gunfire and leaving a trail of blood. The victim, a 27 year old man, told police several men tried to rob him. Uh, we don't know if he, what other demands were made. He took off running. They fired three rounds at him. One shot him in the upper left leg. Sergeant David Diaz tells us evidence on the sidewalk shows the victim ran to ask for help. He ran back to his apartment, notified his roommates. They called him for EMS. The victim was rushed to Bamsey Hospital in critical condition. At the scene, investigators canvassed the area to find any trace of evidence that could help identify the suspects or the getaway vehicle. He just said it was three young males in a vehicle. He couldn't even, he couldn't describe the vehicle to us. Um, said it was dark and that was it. Police say no witnesses have come forward to provide information, but they plan to follow up with the victim once his condition is stable. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All lanes are back open after a crash on the city's west side this morning. It happened just after 5.30 a.m. Officers tell us a man was trying to cross the highway when he was hit by an 18-wheeler. That man was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Police tell us the driver of the 18-wheeler stopped after the crash and is not, is not expected to face any charges. 
Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic here in Bear County. There are 340 new COVID-19 cases for a total of 41,614. 14 more deaths also reported just yesterday. That brings the total number of deaths here to 394. The number of people in the hospital continuing though to decrease. That number is at 817. 345 people are in the ICU and 238 are on ventilators. The number of hospital beds available right now stands at 13% capacity. Some major cities cracking down, trying to contain COVID-19, while others, including border towns here in Texas, are struggling just to treat the patients, including infants, with resources that are stretched thin. ABC's Megan Tavrizian has the story. Today, the situation along the Texas-Mexico border becoming dire. Texas close to half a million confirmed cases, many hospitals filled to capacity. Let me send it, let's see, look at him again. Clarissa Munoz, testing positive for COVID-19, hasn't been able to touch her baby since giving birth. It's not a good feeling at all, especially for me that I'm being a first time mom. In Nueces, Texas, the number of babies testing positive for the virus nearly doubled in two weeks. A field hospital finally set up at the convention center. Doctors coming in from nearby cities to help. Researchers from Children's National Hospital and George Washington University Hospital finding a disproportionate number of non-white children in the Washington, D.C. area are becoming infected with the virus. 46% of children testing positive are Hispanic, 30% black, and 70% white. And now cities like Los Angeles are cracking down, trying to stop scenes like this large wedding in one of L.A.'s wealthiest neighborhoods. Many people not wearing masks or social distancing. The city's mayor threatening to cut water and power to any home or business, violating health orders. These large house parties have essentially become nightclubs in the hills. And beyond the noise, the traffic and nuisance, these large parties are unsafe. And in New York City, the mayor announcing checkpoints at bridges and tunnels to make sure people coming in from states on the hotspot list comply with the 14-day quarantine rules. If you come here, you must quarantine. It is not optional. We do not want to fine you. We do not want to penalize you. In fact, we want to help you quarantine. But if you don't respect our laws, we will penalize you. Increasing restrictions around the country seeming to help. An internal FEMO memo obtained by ABC News showing new cases are decreasing in 45 states. A 10.7% decrease in new cases and a declining increase in deaths over the past week. Dr. Anthony Fauci also acknowledging that anti-science sentiment among many Americans, saying health officials need to be more transparent in reaching out to people so they understand why an evidence-based policy is so important. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, San Diego. There are a lot of uncertainties this back-to-school season, and KSAT wants to help you get some answers. Join us next Tuesday to hear responses to your questions from a panel of local educators and leaders. Some of the guests include the superintendents for SAISD and Northside ISD, as well as State Representative Diego Bernal. The town hall starts at 6.30 in the evening on August 11th, and you can find ways to submit your questions right now on KSAT.com. Happening this afternoon, Judson ISD meantime holding a board meeting. They're going to be discussing several things, including when school should actually start. Right now, board members are considering delaying the start by a few days. District Communications Director Steve Linscombe says that the school staff working now, they are worried about glitches, including a delay in technology supplies that they need to ensure a smooth start to online learning. According to Linscombe, about 5,000 of the 20,000 Chromebooks the district ordered to facilitate online learning have not arrived yet. The school board meeting begins at 1 o'clock this afternoon. And new at noon, the Salvation Army held a public food distribution this morning at the Peacock Boys and Girls Club. 500 families were able to receive food at today's distribution. We're told people were lined up as early as 5 o'clock this morning. The event didn't start till 9. The Salvation Army Public Relations Manager Brad Mayar says serving people in need is what they're all about. 500 families, that's a lot of mouths to feed. I mean, it's so many people all over the city are impacted. So if we can bring some relief for at least 500 families and help them out in some form or fashion, uh, that's uh, what we're here for. 
The IRS says they hope to be able to continue holding these food distributions every Thursday. For more information on future food distributions, just go to satx.org. Hey, still to come, those Lakers not exactly off to a flying start when it's come to the second half of the season. Larry Ramirez has the highlights coming up. And teachers given free food from Whataburger today. Why the burger chain says it's part of a larger initiative. Happening right now, the Secretary of the Army is at Fort Hood. He is holding a news conference after talking with people on post. Fort Hood's been making headlines recently after several soldiers died recently in separate incidents. You can watch the entire thing right now. It's happening on KSAT.com. Whataburger rolled out its first ever food truck this morning and made a stop at the Duseum where a drive through teacher appreciation event was taking place. Teachers were able to get a free breakfast and there were giveaways for classroom supplies. The event also part of a larger initiative at Whataburger. Our program is called Feeding Student Success and uh, educators are a huge part of that. And, uh, Students, educators are the fabric of our community and it's so important uh, that we celebrate them and, and reward them for what they do uh, and, and we couldn't be prouder to do this. Pretty cool looking food truck. It was specially designed in collaboration with San Antonio's own Cruising Kitchens. The company makes customized mobile kitchens. Look like a regular water burger. Yeah, that's spiffy. Yeah. Live look outside, I see, I spy a cloud <laughs> One or two. <laughs> two clouds. That's pretty much all we got. Yeah, we got some fair weather cumulus clouds out there for the time being, but unfortunately no rain will be falling out of those clouds this afternoon. It'll be staying toasty. My colleagues so far this week have done a great job of letting you know that, yeah, we're in the middle of a pretty hot spell here. The aquifer is down two tenths of a foot since yesterday. Good news in the pollen count, though, after having issues with mold essentially all week it's down significantly today moderate with a count of 840 so that's a little bit of good news in your forecast we'll talk about uh, what the rest of your thursday has in store get you a sneak peek of the weekend coming up as well let me guess <laughs> go ahead you think it's going to be 100 degrees today it could get, uh, <laughs> you be know 99 what? i bet you're right could be 101. Oh, somewhere. That's there. our Justin Horn and I were talking today, and that's the thing. We're like now at the point where it's like, do we go 99 or do we go 100? That's our big. Yeah. Structure. Other than one degree. I wish you weren't having quote, that conversation. Know, to yeah. quote Adam Kasky, what is a degree amongst friends? So. Yeah. There you go. Uh, 91 now. It's already toasty out there. Today is a CPS Energy Peak Energy Demand Day. So you are encouraged to lower your energy use between the hours of 3 and 7 p.m. to kind of help ease the pressure on our power grid. You can do that by closing the blinds, turning up your AC a bit, and also avoid using those big appliances that take a lot of energy, again, during the hours of 3 to 7 p.m., because it will be another hot day out there today. This afternoon, we're looking at a forecast high temperature right around 100 degrees. We've got a few fair weather clouds out there now. Generally, though, a whole lot of sunshine. It'll be a bit humid, but we will have a nice breeze in place, essentially, for the rest of the day. Sustained winds around 10 to 15 miles per hour, so that is not too bad. Out there with live cam, there are those fair weather cumulus clouds. Unfortunately, no rain will be falling out of those clouds this afternoon. 91 is our air temperature at the airport, but the yellow number, that's the heat index or what it feels like when you factor in the dew point. And we've already got some pretty high heat index values. Gonzalez, your heat index is up to 98 right now. Same story in New Braunfels. 106, the heat index down in Beeville. So why is their heat index so much higher? Their dew point is a lot higher down closer to the coast, which is fairly typical dew point of 78 there. We're at 70 here in San Antonio, so that's the difference that that can make. Mid-60s up in the hill country. We may see these dew point numbers come down a few degrees this afternoon, but it won't make too much of a difference. Bottom line, still feeling fairly humid out there. But again, the breeze will be our friend this afternoon. South-southeast winds around 10 miles per hour here in San Antonio, but you can expect a breeze between about 10 and 15 this afternoon. Uh, a few morning clouds, especially there west of San Antonio and I-35, starting to thin out a bit, but we're even getting some fair weather cumulative development down to the south of San Antonio. So just a few fair weather clouds this afternoon. Not much rain to speak of today or tomorrow, even down on the coast. Now, as we get into the weekend, there'll be a slightly better chance of a coastal shower in the afternoon hours. Can't rule out 
that one of those tries to sneak up to I-35 in San Antonio in the afternoon and early evening hours this weekend, but you've got a better chance of some rain uh, as we head into the weekend down closer to the coastal bend and the Gulf Coast. The reason why we're not seeing a whole lot of change in our forecast, that's because the heat high continues to hug Texas very closely here, and that'll be true into tomorrow all the way through the weekend as well. I don't really see it moving a whole lot to the west until we get toward the end of next week, so maybe another week or so, and that's when we would maybe start to see a little bit of hope on the horizon here, but in the short term, things will be staying hot and rain free. So do keep in mind CPS energy peak energy demand day today. Try to lower your energy use between the hours of 3 and 7 p.m. Looking ahead to the weekend high temperatures. They they come down a few degrees with some additional clouds this weekend, but generally still hot. And I think another thing to add into the forecast for the weekend will be the possibility of a little bit of Saharan dust returning no. by Sunday. It's not known no, no, at Don't no. worry. It's not going to be too crazy. Come We're going to take a look at that next half hour check on the tropics. Come on, well. she gave us a couple degrees on yeah, the weekend. Okay. I guess so you got to have some dust <laughs> if you're going to have the 98, huh? <laughs> Take that. It's all right. Great. Um, young guys. I don't know if the Spurs are going to make the playoffs or not, but the young guys are getting some serious experience. You know, they're still in the thick of things, of course, and they still have a shot of making the playoffs, but the Spurs are going to need some help from some other teams. But like David saying, man, the Spurs, young guys, they're really playing some great ball, including rookie Keldon Johnson and the NBA bubble really working out for the league, working out great. It's probably the safest place to be when it comes to COVID coming up. You know, players develop uh, with minutes for sure. And he's worked hard. The opportunity came, and he's certainly taken advantage of it and done a really good job. Much better three points. Pop is talking about his rookie guard, Kelvin Johnson, who is showing out in Orlando in big board sports. The Spurs future is bright. Don't be surprised if rookie guard Kelvin Johnson is the one leading the way. He's continuing to show what he can do when he gets the minutes. Yesterday versus Denver, Kelvin scored 20 points off the bench, making 7 of 10 field goals during the Spurs' 132 to 126 loss to the Nuggets. He played nearly eight minutes in the fourth quarter, scoring 13 points during crunch time. Kid can play. Pop is pleased. Well, he, he's shooting the ball a little bit better than I expected. So that's a, it's a good sign that he's got the confidence in when he's open. He's knocking it down. Uh, you know, he was always a good driver, always very competitive. But the fact that he's showing a little confidence in the shooting area is really nice. I mean, every game, I feel like we say something great about Kelly. Um, he just loves basketball, uh, brings energy, plays hard. He open, he knocks down the shot. I mean, he just does the right thing, and he's just going to get better and better each time. Spurs will face the Utah Jazz tomorrow afternoon. Look at that, an early tip at noon. Now, Memphis played Utah yesterday without Jaron Jackson Jr., who's done for the season with a meniscus tear. Third quarter, Grizzlies' Ja Morant ties it at 70 all with this triple try. He had 20 points. Fourth quarter, the Jazz pull away, tied at 102. Mike Conley Jr. for three in the lead for good. Utah comes from 13 down to win, 124 to 115. Memphis fifth straight loss and fourth in the bubble. So the Grizzlies hold in eighth place, is down to one game on number nine, Portland. The Spurs are two back, and they certainly missed a great opportunity yesterday to gain some ground. The latest batch of NBA COVID-19 test results are out, and of the 343 players tested for the virus on the NBA campus, since test results were last announced on July 29th, zero have returned confirmed positive tests. The bubble is working in the event that a player on the NBA campus returns a confirmed positive test in the future. He will be isolated until he's cleared for leaving isolation under the rules established by the NBA and the Players Association. And number one in the West took one on the chin last night. LeBron and company, well, they certainly had a horrible game. First quarter against Oklahoma City, the Lakers made six of 21 baskets for a measly 28.6%. For the first half, they shot 34.1% their worst in a first half this season. Thunder led 52-45 at halftime, and they hammered the Lakers 105-86. LeBron, who scored a team best 19 points, doesn't really sound all that concerned. I think we have some, some great possessions. I think sometimes we have some, some early quick, um, you know, shot selection, some bad shot selection, you know, throughout the course of some of these games. Uh, but for the majority, I feel like we've got some great looks. We'll continue to, to find good looks, find great looks, and, uh, you know, and our shooters, including myself, 
um, you know, and everybody else will, you know, we'll get our rhythm and start making some. LeBron and the Lakers will face the Rockets tonight at eight, looking for that rhythm. You worried about the Lakers? Um, no. <laughs> All right. Probably not. Yeah. We yeah. won't find too many people who are. Right. <laughs> Larry, thanks. You got it. Not here. As the concern for sending kids back to school grows, many parents are now questioning whether school buses are a safe option. Still ahead, what one school in Kentucky is doing to keep every kid safe from the virus. Plus, if you've been itching to go on a cruise, you may have to keep on waiting. Still ahead on the news at noon, more cancellations in the cruise ship industry. And so the kids are going back to school, and with many of them starting the school year learning from home, you might be considering a new computer. What kinder to college cares which laptops are best suited for your student and what you might want to consider before you buy? That's today after Entertainment Tonight on KSO 12 News at 5. We'll be back. The fight in Congress over another economic stimulus package showing few signs of progress as talks are expected to slip into next week now. There's a seemingly lack of urgency from both parties on Capitol Hill to reach an agreement on a coronavirus relief bill. ABC's Andrew Dimbert is tracking the latest on these arduous negotiations from the nation's capital. There's still no coronavirus stimulus bill in sight. Congress struggling to craft out a new bill and time is running out. Laid off workers just lost a lifeline. The $600 weekly supplemental unemployment benefit lapsed last Friday after Congress couldn't reach a deal. And 1.2 million Americans just joined them on the unemployment line. Now that the $600 from the CARES Act has ended, I am just... I'm frightened. And while Democrats and Republicans are blaming each other as they try to work out a deal, out of work Americans are dealing with the pain in their pockets. That uh, if they won't extend, then uh, then I will have trouble paying my bill. While slightly better than expected today, for 20 straight weeks, U.S. unemployment insurance claims have topped 1 million. Congressional lawmakers working on a relief measure, but talks keep breaking down. White House officials signaling a deal could be dead if an agreement is not reached by the end of the week. It's critically important that we come to a compromise if there is a deal to be made. The impasse impacting real American families, forcing them to food banks like this one in California. Our county is working so hard with the few resources we have to try to mitigate things as much as possible, and it's spiraling out of control. Several leaders from both parties have vowed to work through the upcoming recess if they still don't have a bill by Friday, but can struggling Americans hold on until a deal is done? That extra $600 has been a lifeline to us to keep the roof over our heads, keep food on the table. The president has said if Congress can't get a deal done, he'll take some form of executive action. But even if he does, such an order wouldn't reach the scale or the magnitude of the stimulus package being discussed in Congress right now. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. Travel to New York City is starting to look a little different. The city is now setting up travel checkpoints for people coming in and out of the city. Entry points to New York City, like bridges and tunnels, will be used as checkpoints, but it's scheduled to change day to day. This is because more than a fifth of coronavirus cases in New York are from people coming from other states. New York City is requiring travelers from 34 states plus Puerto Rico to quarantine for 14 days. Travelers are also required to fill out a travel form, but those who violate the rules can be fined up to $10,000 and more changes are coming to air travel. JetBlue, Alaska Airlines and United are banning the use of masks with plastic vents and valves on the side. That's because they're not as effective. As parents prepare to send their kids back to school, many are wondering if school buses are the safe option. For one school in Kentucky, the new routine of social distancing and wearing masks for students will start on the bus. Parents may be asked to check their kids' temperature before they get on the bus. Every kid's going to be using hand sanitizer as they head to their seats, and a team fully disinfects the bus once everyone gets off. The National Association for Pupil Transportation says there should be fewer kids on board, too. One of the largest things that's being done is change, the changing of bell times that will enable school buses to run multiple routes during the day to get students to and from school safely. 
The CDC also recommends one child per row and skipping rows where possible. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say people are getting sick, some even dying from ingesting hand sanitizer. The CDC says 15 adults in Arizona and New Mexico were hospitalized between May and June for methanol poisoning after consuming alcohol-based hand sanitizers. Four of them died, six had seizures in the hospital, and three were discharged with new visual impairments. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration recently put out a warning to be on the lookout for methanol in some hand sanitizers distributed in the U.S. Methanol is toxic and can even poison people through their skin. We're all watching the skies, hoping, even though there's not much hope, <laughs> for a little rain or a cooler temperature or two. I think as we get closer to the weekend, there will be a better chance for some of those afternoon coastal showers to pop up. And it's never out of the question that some of those try to sneak up to I-35 in San Antonio. So that's kind of a bright spot in the forecast. Otherwise, a lot of the same. We'll be staying hot here in the early part of August. At the airport, already up to 91. It's 89 in Hondo, mid to upper 80s in the Hill Country. Those little white specks there, those are our little fair weather cumulus clouds. Those are those cotton ball clouds, and they may provide uh, some brief shade at times today. Winds are out of the south southeast, keeping our dew points high. Wind speeds generally about 5 to 15 miles per hour, but I expect we'll hold on to a pretty decent breeze this afternoon and this evening. Without that breeze, it would just be you know that stagnant, hot, heavy air. So uh, at least we'll keep the air moving around just a little bit for the rest of the day. 3 p.m. up to 98. We'll top out around 100 degrees this afternoon under sunny skies. 7 p.m. still in the mid to upper 90s. Eventually, we'll cool down into the 80s by about 10 o'clock tonight. But overall, another hot day on deck here. It's also a CPS Energy Peak Energy Demand Day, so you're encouraged to limit your power use or your energy use from 3 to 7 p.m. to kind of ease the stress on the power grid. And here are some things that you can do. Minimize your appliance usage during that time, so maybe don't run the dishwasher or the washing machine then. Turn off lights in empty rooms. I am so guilty of this. That's an easy way that you can uh, lower your power use during that uh, time frame. And also close the window blinds in the shades, and then you can uh, maybe cool your your house or your apartment down a little bit uh, by keeping a little bit of that bright sunlight out. So just some things you can do to save on energy today since it is a CPS Energy Peak Energy Demand Day. I'll be back in just a little bit with a look at what's going on in the tropics and when we could maybe see a little bit of that Saharan dust sneak back into the forecast. David. So what you're saying is your mom was on you to turn the lights out yeah. all the time? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Astros bats not hot enough last night. Larry Mears with some highlights coming up. When the coronavirus pandemic hit, some companies made the switch from making alcoholic beverages to making hand sanitizer due to the increased demand. Well, now a new problem for those distilleries, too much product, not enough customers. Why the demand for hand sanitizer seems to be slowing down. That's after the break. In your consumer news this noon, a new feature from Google lets you protect important documents and images as well as video and audio files. The company is introducing something that's called the safe folder this week. No one can have access to the files unless they have a special pin code. You can find the new safe folder feature under Google's files app. And as soon as you switch away, the app automatically locks protecting your files from prying eyes. Not everyone has access to the new feature just yet. However, Google says it will be gradually expanding availability. All major cruise lines have now canceled cruises at least through October. That's according to the Cruise Lines International Association. Its members include Carnival, Disney, Norwegian, and Royal Caribbean. Previously, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention issued a no-sale order effective through September for cruise ships carrying more than 250 passengers due to the coronavirus. However, the group says it's extending that for health and safety of passengers and crew. People are seeing their grocery bills go up, and it's not just because some folks are making more trips to the store. From February to June, meat and poultry prices rose nearly 11 percent. Beef and veal prices recorded the highest climb, spiking 20 percent. Also on the rise, prices for eggs, cereal, and fresh vegetables. This all as new data comes in from the Bureau of Economic Analysis, which tracks personal consumption expenditures to help measure inflation. The higher prices at stores also attributed to rather disruptions in the supply chain.
And you may remember several alcohol distilleries stepped up to the plate to meet the need for sanitizer and started making it at their facilities. Well, now some of those companies say they've got too much hand sanitizer. The New York Times is reporting that some distilleries are now having trouble finding people to buy the products. Part of the reason there's less demand for hand sanitizer and large brands are now pumping out more product. Remember how hard it was to find <laughs> hand sanitizer like two months ago? Yeah. Now? I remember how hard it was to find toilet paper three months ago. Oh, gosh. Oh. <laughs> glad, we're, glad we're past that. <laughs> glad we are past that. Checking on the aquifer today. It's down two-tenths of a foot. We'll take these small little drops while we can get them. Current level 657.9. Right at the monthly average for August. And good news in the pollen count. This is one of the bright spots in the forecast today. Mold is down significantly from where it's been the past couple of days. It's moderate with a count of 840. I think it'll continue to fall a little bit more through tomorrow and the upcoming weekend. More on your weekend forecast and a little bit of that Saharan dust returning coming up. This week's Throwback Thursday takes us a little north of San Antonio. It's a road becoming more and more traveled. Highway 281 north and south to and from Comal County. That means more traffic traveling over one of the most historic bridges in Texas, the Parker Through Trust Bridge. The bridge just underwent two years of repairs to maintain the integrity so it can withstand the increase in traffic. The bridge was actually built over two years back in 1935 and 36 by the highway department. It is 612 feet long. It has a polygonal top cord. The roadway runs along the bottom cords of the bridge. They're connected with the lateral bracing. The bridge was designed by Charles Parker, who patented the design back in 1870. Before the bridge was built, the road just north of the river didn't even exist. Matter of fact, the road, now 281, ended back at Highway 46. And back then, it was farm to market road 475. There are fewer than 20 of these Parker through trust bridges still standing in Texas. A lot of folks crossing the river headed to the lake up there. Yeah, Crap. well, that's one way to cool off yeah. if you could find a little pool of water somewhere. Yeah, seriously. That will be true through the weekend. Yeah, this is the part of the part of our uh, weather this time of year that we, you know, we kind of sound like we're repeating ourselves. So we, we we're trying to mix it up a little bit. So let's start with talking about the tropics. It has been a very active hurricane season already and the remainder of the season via the National Hurricane Center and some researchers at Colorado State uh, keeps things above average in terms of tropical activity for the rest of this season. Keep in mind that runs through the end of November, and we typically mm. do see activity start to peak as we get into uh, the middle of August here. So we're already through the I name. Next name up is Josephine, but I don't think we'll be using Josephine anytime soon. Here is a look at what's going on out in the Atlantic Basin at this time. Only thing of note here is where you see this little yellow X. That's a disturbance that the Hurricane Center has been keeping an eye on, but they don't expect it to develop over the next couple of days. So it doesn't look like that will be Josephine. So we'll hold on to that J name for a little bit longer. And elsewhere, nothing coming off of Africa just yet. Likely because we've still got some of that Saharan dust coming off of the African continent uh, at this time. There's a little smaller plume out in front, and I think we could start to see that roll into South Texas as early as this weekend. Now, this is not going to be like that big, dense plume we saw earlier in the year. Uh, but we could start to see maybe skies turn a touch hazy as we get into the back half of the weekend. This is Sunday at 2 p.m. You'll notice this lighter tan color uh, as far as how dense this dust will be. We're down on the lighter side of things, so maybe if you're really paying attention, you could notice things a touch on the hazy side as we get into Sunday and Monday. That will clear on out, but then it's possible that we have another plume of this start to roll in late next week. So essentially, as we're in the summer months, we could see the Saharan dust kind of roll in off and on. And of course, we'll keep you updated there. But as long as that Saharan dust is pretty dense out in the Atlantic Ocean, that tends to suppress tropical activity. So those two things do go hand in hand at times. Looking ahead to this weekend, it'll be staying hot. I did get you down to 98 and 99, I think, because we'll have some additional cloud cover lingering into the afternoon hours. Also, the possibility of some coastal showers in the afternoon hours as we get into this weekend. As we've been saying, it's not never out of the question that one of those little showers could get to the I-35 corridor, but it is 
unlikely. So plan on being rain free this weekend. 91 at the airport right now, dew point of 70. That means we're pulling the heat index of 97 degrees right now, but the heat index well into the triple digits down to the southeast on the coastal bend, feeling like 108 in Beeville. Gonzalez, your heat index just jumped up to 100 degrees. So heat index will be higher down to the southeast where we've got those higher dew point numbers. Dew points are a little bit lower up in the hill country, but overall, essentially, if you're in the 60s and 70s, it's feeling it's feeling humid out there. So hot and humid for the rest of your Thursday. Here's a look at where your high temperatures will end up. Keep in mind your heat index, especially down to the southeast, could be a little bit higher, but generally we'll see high temperatures upper 90s near 100 degrees today. And of course, CPS Energy Peak Energy Demand Day. Try to conserve that power between 3 and 7 today. Looking ahead, not a whole lot of change. The heat high will still have good, a good grip on our weather here in South Texas through the middle of next week. When it looks like that will change, boy, we will let you know. We'll be right back. USA football is scheduled to kick off fall camp tomorrow morning under first year head coach Jeff Trailer. Their 2020 season opener September 5th at LSU was canceled after the SEC went to conference only games and they also lost their week two contest or home opener with Grambling State when the Southwestern Athletic Conference chose to move football to the spring. It's certainly been tough for first year head coach Jeff Trailer. The, the hardest part is we don't know exactly when we're going to play. Um, you know, what if a game jumps up August 29th? Uh, what if we don't play to September 12th? So that, that's, that's been the hardest part, to be very honest with you. The second hardest part is, you know, like for breakfast, uh, only half of them can be in there at a time. So you've got to double schedule breakfast. You got to double schedule lunch. You got to double schedule supper. You got to double schedule meeting time because we can't all be in the building at the same time. UTSA Athletic Director Lisa Campo said in a statement the program remains committed to a 12 game schedule. As of now, they only have 10 games and the Roadrunners first one is Saturday, September 12th at Texas State. The Spurs are now two and two in the Orlando bubble and still in the thick of the playoff race. The young guys are really doing a terrific job and they continue to improve. Center Jakob Perter really sticks out in that Spurs small ball lineup and he struggled in Orlando in part to being in foul trouble. Still great experience for the big man. This is the perfect situation for for Jakob and, and for the other guys too is to be able to um, you know be thrown in the fire so to speak to be able to um, learn on the fly. Um, so, so this is what you know. These few weeks was always going to be about was development um, and and meaningful things as well. Um, so I, I think it's great. I think Jakob is going to come out of these few weeks a much better player, and if he can implement that um, into the future, um, you know, this is what it, what it's all about. And then the same goes with the other guys, and, and they're doing such a great job. Sounds like a heartbeat in the background, doesn't it? Patty and the Spurs will take on the Utah Jazz tomorrow at noon local time. Time to play ball, Houston and Arizona. The Astros led 4-0 before the Diamondbacks storm back. Bottom four, bases loaded for David Peralta, and he drives one to the right field corner and good for a three-run triple. The Diamondbacks go up 5-4, part of a nine-run inning, which included an inside-the-park homer for Cole Calhoun. Arizona wins 14-7. The two will close out their three-game series tonight. Rangers at the Athletics. Texas also coming up on the wrong end of the scoreboard. Eighth inning, Athletics up five to four. Matt Olson crushes his second home run of the game. Big fly to right center, 409 feet. A's take it six to four and will go for the three game sweep this afternoon. And in the Texas Collegiate League playoffs, Brazos Valley is moving on after beating the Flying Chonklas seven to three last night to win the series two games to none. Still a great experience for those young men. Yeah, guys. All right, Larry, thank you. You know what? If SA Live didn't have good food on their show, I think we should cancel it today. But they do. They always do. So well, here we go again. Not only do they have some delicious quesadillas, they've got uh -huh. it's girls' day. Girls' rule. <laughs> yeah. Boys' drool. <laughs> and we got Sorry, food. We yeah. know what's up. And yes, we are showing off some of what's claimed to be the best quesadillas mm. in the city of San Antonio with standout flavors from Central and Southern Mexico. You know, I'm so excited to try those. Also, it's a fun way to blow off some steam. I go full lumberjack at Stumpy's Hatchet House.
And it's a one-of-a-kind market where you can shop from talented designers, artisans, creators, and craftsmen right here in town. We'll tell you how you can get some free tickets for not just one, but three of your closest friends and family can go with you. Ooh, we love freebies. August and September are the busiest months for birthdays and having to spend money on gifts for your family, friends and kids, all that, you know, it adds up. So we have some freebies to tell you about. Okay. And also, San, uh, San Antonio has seen many stars, of course, that come and go, but it has, and also, uh, change the life of many celebrities. We're gonna play a trivia game in just a bit to see if you can guess the Alamo City celebrity. You're gonna beat me on this. Oh, I, I guess you are. I know. We'll see. <laughs> you can play along.